Welcome to This Week at Vorschlag. It's May 8th, 2015. Let's take a walk around the shop, see what's going on. The first thing we're going to look at is a new exhaust system being built for the Scion FRS right to my left. Uh, this is the last step before we start the car up, so we're really excited about that. All right, so we started at the back with a MagnaFlow factory system for the FRS, and as we move forward, you can see the three inch pipe that uh, we built. We put a V-band here so the rear section can come off. We've mocked up a drive shaft, long story there, we're still waiting for that. We've got a three inch exhaust pipe that runs all the way forward. There's a Y there, they go from the two exhaust headers. So that was all handmade in house. We got two MagnaFlow catalytic converters and V-band clamps up front as well. Really good ground clearance, it's tucked up in the factory tunnel. Uh, should be nice and uh, have a nice sound, but be quiet and not too obtrusive. Check back in next time, we should have this car running and driving. Uh, we're working with an outside shop to do the CAN bus interface between the Toyota Subaru computer and the GM computer. But it's all there, it's all wired, it's all plumbed. It's ready to fire, probably next week. We've been doing some work on the LS1 Miata. We've got the Corvette brakes on the front. Uh, some Bilstein ASN Motorsport shocks being built for the front as well. The parts are here, we just gotta put them together. And in the engine bay, we've got motor mounts tweaked, steering shaft done. Uh, we just got an LS2 intake manifold yesterday and the mock-up LS3 intake manifold could come off. So we're moving forward on that, really excited. All right, as you can see here, this is a Subaru WRX GD generation. This is a NHRA, NHRA 8.5 legal cage. Uh, customer wanted full interior and the use of the back seat. A little unusual, uh, but we made it happen. Ryan built this thing, and he's got the dash back in and almost wrapped up. Just got to put the windshield back in. A few, few things to tidy up. Put the Cobra Suzuka GT seats in the front. Should be pretty nice. We've got removable door bars for streetability. So I may have showed the, uh, the hood last time, the ducted hood that Olaf built out of this uh, carbon fiber composite hood. Uh, the hood venting worked out really well. Actually saw some real big heat plumes coming out and I'll show that from Optima, uh, reducing under hood heat. Uh, now Ryan is building some custom coolant reservoirs for the intercooler system and for the radiator system. We're gonna upgrade the radiator to a big Mishimoto. We've already done a huge oil cooler. Uh, can never get enough heat out of a supercharged car on track. That's always gonna be the battle. Even the OEMs fight it, the new C7 Z06 has massive heat problems. Uh, so this is nothing new. In Texas, it's even worse because we have a little bit higher heats in the summer. So we're doing everything we can to clear out room behind the radiator to give this ducted hood some place for the air to go. We'll have a waterfall deflector down there and uh, see what we can do about getting more air to go out the hood through the hood vent we've added. All right, this is a car a uh, customer brought us. It's got a Coyote Swap V8. We've done a lot of work on this car. Uh, we recommended a wheel and tire upgrade, so we're gone to an 18.9 D-Force in the front, 18.10 rear on this E90 chassis, E92 chassis. That's about as big as you can go without flares. Uh, it's gonna be a big step up from the narrower wheels and tires he had on there before. It's gonna have Hoosier R7s, 255 and a 295. For this V8, it makes sense to go non-square. So we have Jerry Seco's car. He's one of the uh, head instructors out at ECR, and he's gonna upgrade the rear brakes, the GT500, the 14 inch rotors. To do that, you gotta pull the rear axles out to change this bracket. Uh, and he needed to do some service in the rear end just to check things out. So fresh fluid inside, uh, bigger brackets out here. So that's the, the hardest part to do on this job is to pull these brackets off. You've gotta pull the rear axle out. And so we go with the bigger brackets that moves the factory caliper outboard and go with a 14 inch rotor and gives you a bit more braking power, a little more bit bigger heat sink. It's got, already has brake cooling in the front that we've done long ago. And uh, Carbotech brakes front and rear, moved up to XP20s. This is Mark Council's 2002 Corvette. Uh, we ran it at Optima. It was pretty terrible. I've shown my write-up from that event. But uh, the one upgrade we'd made was a CF5 Ford Star 1811 front and rear. We just got these powder coated, finally had time to do that. And I'll also show pictures of the new exhaust we put on the back. Different kind of routing than you normally see on a Corvette. The heat shields on the outside there to prevent the exhaust from really torching the paint. And it's shielded inside and out. 
so one of the things we did up front on uh, this Roush was to move the battery to the back and gave us uh, room to put the bigger coolant reservoirs up front in the factory battery location. So Ryan built this battery bracket and uh, moved some weight to the rear. Down low, this car has got one of our rear axle fluid catch cans. The axle fluid in the 8.8s gets really hot on track and boils. And so we have it come up from the vent tube either on the watch link cover or on the axle housing and the vapor eventually liquefies and it can drain right back down and then we vent this canister externally so that stinky nasty vent uh, diff fluid doesn't stink up the whole car the vent goes down to a little filter underneath the car in the back we've been making parts on the lathe all week uh, for camera plate back orders we call these lower spool pieces this is part of our camera plates so we're going to make those this weekend after we fix a, uh, a broken bit. And then on the mill, we're going to cut some more bearing holders for a bunch of different camera plates as well. So the more these machines can be running, the closer we can get to getting caught up on back orders. We just ran a bunch of GD camera plates on that fixture. And then uh, we're going to make the bearing holders on in the vise there. And we'll have a big fixture. We can make 10 at a time. That's the goal is to make that next. So we start in here with a big 11, 12 inch long piece of inch and a quarter uh, steel bar. And we cut these off one at a time. It makes about four at a time. And then we move the bar out. And this is just part of the process on the CNC lathe. All right, we ran the 92 Corvette Project Danger Zone at the second NASA race for this year. Uh, didn't make a full lap in competition because we had some problems with the engine. Uh, after Olaf fixed all the leaks, uh, we realized there was a lot of excess crankcase pressure and we think it's got a broken ring. There's a lot of metal in the oil pan. Uh, pulled the motor out. We've already shipped it off to HK Racing Engines. They're going to rebuild the motor to the uh, legal limit of the rules. No gray areas. It's all going to be legal. Uh, there are a couple things we found out about the roll cage after someone wrote in to uh, the national office. So there's like one or two tubes we're going to change. Pretty inconsequential, uh, but we want to make this car squeaky clean legal and it should be up and running again uh, middle of June for Hallett, uh, NASA Race 3, NASA Texas. This is Jason's in a Miata. Olaf's been uh, autocrossing recently, having a good time. We just ordered MCS shocks for this car to get these Coney 28s off. Ride like a jackhammer. Old Truck Norris, I haven't updated this project in a while. We've got a bunch of new parts for it and I'll uh, update that project thread soon. I'm way behind on my forum updates. It's our little work truck. All right, here we got Big Red, our 2011 Mustang, TT3 car. Reluctantly for sale, I wish I could keep it. We've had this car for five years though, and our test mules usually don't last more than a year or two. Uh, we've had such good success with this car in NASA TT3. It's, uh, we haven't had a defeat since like 2013 in this car, and it was just once that year. So uh, we win four tires every time we take it to the track. I want to move this on down the line. It's, it's the last event at TWS. We won by four seconds over second place in an 11-car class. Um, so we, we're hoping that somebody will see that and go, there's a lot of potential here to do really well, take home four Hoosier tires every weekend. It's kind of gotten to be easy. I, mean, I only took one lap on Sunday to win. So somebody's buy this car and take all the free tires with it, please. Here we got John's, I think it's a 2006 Legend Lime Mustang GT three valve. Uh, John's been killing it lately in cam class and uh, he just won at the last Texas Region SCCA event uh, where Big Red took the top time of day and top packs and John crushed it in cam T. So uh, he's having a good time running Ford Star 1811s, MCS TT2s, Vorslag camber plates front and rear. Pretty good setup, he dailies it, works great. All right, that's it for this week. Thanks for tuning in to this week of Vorschlag, May 8th, 2015. We'll see you next time.